Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Jen back with another edition of Jen Sports Corner. You can see the title right now. Training camp is starting to heat up, baby. Let's go, man. The end of week one. Got a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's cover it. Before I get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. And click that notification bell so you know every time I'm dropping a video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into it. Look at the standout players from week one, the stars, the duds, all that stuff. First player on my list, obviously, and a hey, big name, figuratively and literally, Jordan Davis, man, the number one pick in this year's draft. Hey, came in at 340. Uh, shout, out, shout out to Dave Zingaro for the notes. Um, hey, he's been winning the one-on-ones and flashing during 11-on-11 drills, and he's getting a lot of first-team reps, and that's that's really telling you something. He's coming in. He's not just looking like a rookie or a guy that's just coming in to learn. Obviously, he is, but he he's making some plays. He's, he's looking like he's going to be possibly a day-one starter the way he's showing up and showing out. Seems like he came in just doing his work and then he's been heating up as the week's going on. Hell, yesterday it was 99 degrees and I guess Jordan Davis was like, F it, I'm going to match that temperature. And he's been bringing the heat. So we're going to see what he looks like going into the second week, getting ready for this Jets game next Friday. So that's something that I really like to hear. The defense has been dominant this week. For those of you who haven't heard, they've been giving the offense some fits. Jalen Hurts been having some up and downs. That that would be a guy that's, I'd say, on on par with where we thought he would be. He's not doing anything great. He, he has had some, some bad throws here and there, but nothing terrible. He's been just kind of treading water. But that defense has been giving him so uh, he's been giving, giving everybody on the offense a rough time, which is, in my opinion, a good thing. Second on this list, James Bradbury, the big pickup from the Giants this year and look Steve Nelson he he did a good job last year we'll we'll give him that across from Darius Slay but Bradbury he's as advertised so far in this offseason and he's just he's giving Devontae Smith everything he can handle I love to see that steel sharp and steel he's going to be able to show him where his deficiencies are at so he can work on those things and it's just good to be able to go up against a top flight cornerback in practice because it's only going to make you better only going to make you better so now he has aj brown in his ear helping him out from the offensive aspect route running t- tips and, and tricks of the trade and then bradbury being able to challenge him as he picks up these new tools in his arsenal he's able to put that theory to the test see what works see what doesn't work so it's, that's great third and look, one of my favorite Eagles players, period, you know, throughout my years being a fan, one Mr. Brandon Graham coming off of that Achilles injury, and he's looking sharp. He's looking sharp. I like what I see. That was the question, would he be the same coming off that Achilles tear? Because it hasn't even been a full year yet from what I can remember. I don't remember if he got injured in October or November, but he's coming back strong. He's looking good, and he's been, according to Dave Zangaro, giving Jack Driscoll, just giving him work, man. I guess putting him in a torture chamber. So, you know, BG's getting reps with the second-team defense, and he's just torturing the likes of the Jack Driscoll's of the world and maybe the Andre Dillard's of the world. It lets you know that he's right back on track where he needs to be. And it's going to be huge for our pass rush. And we're going to get into the depth chart and how this roster is looking so far. And then A.J. Brown, he's doing A.J. Brown things. We don't really need to say that much on that standpoint. Besides the fact that him and Darius Slay, as you can see in the thumbnail, it's a battle, man. It's a battle. Darius Slay getting that work. And I would imagine from time to time, he giving A.J. Brown that work. So... Very, very good to see on both sides of the football between A.J. Brown and Darius Slay. I'm, I'm loving the secondary if you haven't figured out already. And then Avante Maddox looking very, very good in the slot because now you have your trio with Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, and Nick Quez Watkins in the slot with that four, that sub 4-4 four, four speed. And Avante Maddox, even in the one-on-one drills where it's, it's really made for the offensive player to have the advantage, he's winning his fair share. 
of, of those battles, which, which tells you a lot about Avanti Maddox, his athleticism, and his skill level. Going into, I believe, this might be his fourth year now. Looking very good. And then, for me, my wild card here, last year my wild card on the line was Landon Dickerson. He stepped up and really played well in the absence of Brandon Brooks. And he showed you a lot. He showed you why you drafted him and exactly what you were hoping he would be coming out of Alabama. And then this year, you get Cam Jurgens in the draft, I believe in the second round out of Nebraska, if I'm not mistaken. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but another undersized center, but very, very strong at the point of attack. And he's really doing his thing right now in the one-on-ones, in the team drills. And he's he's got a shot to to push Sayamalu at right guard. Because right now, Landon Dickerson, he has left guard locked up. Save Molly got moved to right guard and Save Molly's been looking solid. But Cam Jurgens, this this won't be a stiff stiff competition there. Stiff competition there. Now some some of the bad here. Garden Minshew look looking kind of shaky, throwing a lot of interceptions. He's got to get into a rhythm and 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 get that thing going. And but that says a lot about this the depth of this Eagles defensive line because I think they're putting some pressure on him and making him make some mistakes. Derek Barnett and Brandon Graham, if that's your second team defensive line, they're, you know, it's, it's going to be a little rough. It's going to be a little rough. And then the other, other player that we want to see do more is N'Kobe Dean. And I, I think he's looked pretty solid, but I think this speaks more towards the improvements that the Eagles have made to their linebacking core. T.J. Edwards, obviously, here from, from last year. Three- to four-year vet already. Kaiser White, the big free agent pickup from former Charger. Great speed, sideline-to-sideline player. Had, I think, over 100 tackles last year with the Chargers. He, he was really flying all over the field. Davion Taylor, uh, you know, we, we know him for the speed, being a headbanger, and he's been making some flashy plays here and there. Sean Bradley making some flashy plays. But it's, it's really good to see T.J. Edwards stepping up at the Mike linebacker spot because he's, look, I think he, he heard the footsteps. He knows that Kobe Dean is in here, and he's here for a reason to take his job at middle linebacker, and it doesn't look like he's ready to relinquish that title of first-string starter anytime soon. So that's good that his play has picked up and he's been – making plays over the, all over the field because at the very least that means that you have depth at middle linebacker with N'Kobe Dean and at the very best it means you have a very very good capable middle linebacker in TJ Edwards and then you can also run a 3-4 with Edwards and N'Kobe Dean at the Mike linebacker spots when you want to change your front to a 3-4 so it gives you a lot of versatility there so I really love that a lot so that's that's everything that I have right now on the standout players of the week now let's go ahead and shift over to the depth chart battles and the ones to watch for me I'm going to go like I said right back to the offensive line and we're looking at Cam Jurgens and Isaac Sayamalu now that battle there you have four spots locked up with guys who have a chance to each be pro bowlers in Jason Kelsey Lane Johnson at right tackle excuse me, Landon Dickerson at left guard, and then Jordan Malata at left tackle. So the right tackle spot is really the position where you're looking to see who's going to come out on top there. And I, I, look, yeah, Cam Jurgens been impressive so far. Jack Driscoll has been impressive at right guard as well. He's, he's like a swing guard tackle. But Cam Jurgens, to me, that's the that's the battle I want to see between him and Sam Milo. So that's battle number one. The second one that I'm really looking at is at the wide receiver position because, like I said, you have A.J. Brown starting at the number one spot. You have um, Smitty across from him. Then you have Quez Watkins in the slot, earned his spot. And then fourth, quietly but surely, Mr. Jalen Riker has been having a very, very solid training camp. And if he can show improvement as a punt returner or kick returner, he might lock up that number four spot. We'll see how he plays in these preseason games, but he's quietly been having a very, very good camp. And then we're looking at the fifth spot, 
And this one is a toss-up because we brought in Zach Pascal thinking that he would be that veteran presence to be your number four, your number five receiver. I mean, more realistically, we're expecting him to be the number four receiver, but he's had that stomach bug all summer. Well, at least the first week of training camp. And I'm reading one of these articles here, and he said that he threw up, I believe he said 50 times in one day. Something crazy like that. 50 times in one day. He said he couldn't stop throwing up. And in the meantime, he's off the field, and... Jalen Rager just been putting in that work, putting in that work. So at this point, I think that it's going to be a battle with the number five spot between John Hightower, Zach Pascal, and then Greg Ward. Greg Ward, who's been Mr. Reliable in the slot. Get you the first down, move the chains, good hands. He not he, We don't know. He's on the bubble. We don't know what's going to happen with him. So that's a three-way battle for the number five spot, in my opinion, to watch for. And then let's go ahead and move on to, we talked about middle linebacker already. Um, I think N'Kobe Dean and, and Kaiser White, they're going to be pushing TJ Edwards for that number one spot. But I, I, I'm looking at Kaiser White and N'Kobe Dean both battling to be the number two middle linebacker when they move to those three, four fronts. So that's going to be a very interesting battle to watch right there. And then lastly, I want to go ahead and look at the cornerback position top three spots locked up big play slay one side James Bradbury the other side Avante Maddox locking up the slot cornerback role and then the fourth and the fifth cornerback slots it's a lot of competition there the fourth slot I think Zach McPherson really made a name for himself last year and has planted his roots right now in that number four spot in my opinion behind Darius Slay and James Bradbury. He's going to be the backup cornerback for either one of those guys. But that fifth spot, I, Josh Joby, I believe he's a, I believe he's a rookie free agent, free agent, and then Mario Goodrich. Those are the two names, me personally, that I'm looking at. I, I believe Goodrich is out of Clemson, had some really good tape, and Josh Joby, again, really solid cover corner. So for the fifth spot, those are the two guys that are going to be on my radar. I mean, you have Kerry Vincent Jr., Mac McCain, Tate Goat, uh, Gowan, Josh Blackwell, but Goodrich and Job, those those are the ones that are, are sticking out to me. So I'll be keep, keeping a close eye on that battle there. And then, you know what? Forget it. Let's go ahead and throw this last one in here. We're going to see between Rager and, and David Allen and Jason Huntley. But Devin Allen, I mean, come on, man. He made the final at the World Outdoor Track and Field Championships, the third fastest time in the 110 meter hurdles. And I think he lost by a tenth of a second or a crazy slim margin. He, he was phenomenal. So I want to see that speed on the field. And, and that's one of the, the players I'm really looking at against the Jets. I want to see what is he like with the ball in his hand is he going to be like Jeremy Bloom if we go way back in the day with Andy Reid? Jeremy Bloom was an Olympic skier who ran a sub 4-4, blazing speed, but uh, a great returner at Colorado, but could not translate it to the field in the NFL. Is he going to be a Jeremy Bloom or is he going to be a problem? As a, as a punt returner and possibly as a kick returner. So that that's what I'm looking for right now. So those are the guys, uh, the battles the battles in the depth chart, the ones that I'm going to be looking at. And then lastly, the question is going into next Friday. And these are some important things to think about as we see this roster tape shape. And the first thing I'm going to really be thinking about is that pass rush. That equals pass rush. We had the least sacks in the league last year. Second fewer sacks, excuse me, 29. We had a lot of pressures, but we were not getting home with that pass rush. Obviously, we had the, the injury to Brandon Graham. Derek Barnett did not play up to expectations. Josh Sweat's really the only person who gave you sacks off that D-line. Fletcher Cox had a down year with three and a half sacks. Javon Hargraves, great year. But be, beyond those two, you really didn't have anything in terms of being able to bring pressure. Now you're getting that back. Brandon Graham at 34 coming off that Achilles, but he looks healthy, so that's that's big. You have Josh Sweat coming back healthy after 
that I think he had a blood clot situation. He had a very, very bad illness. Then that's the reason why he didn't play in that Buccaneers game. So he looks like he's back healthy. That's good. Now you have Hargraves, uh, Fletcher Cox back on a one-year deal, and then Jordan Davis to add to that D-tackle rotation. And now you also have Hassan Reddick at the same linebacker position, somebody who can slide down to a three-point stance at the end and be able to bring pressure from a three-point stance if needed. So you have a lot more tools to work with now. And then N'Kobe Dean, if he gets some time in that rotation, he was one of the best blitzing linebackers in all of college football last year on what probably was an NFL-level defense at Georgia. So that's what I'm going to be looking at. The first teamers, how much time did they get? Can they get some pressure? But really the second team, can they get in there against that second team unit and really put their asses to work? That's what we want to see. Okay. Secondly, stemming off of the defensive line and the pressure they're going to be able to get. Is Fletcher Cox going to be fresher because now you have Jordan Davis in there? You're going to be able to rotate him out, bring him in, you know, on first down and then maybe third downs, keep him fresh so he's able to come in and really give 100% effort. And then secondly, since you have all these weapons with the D-line, he'll be getting more one-on-one matchups, I would assume. So I'm, I'm really curious to see what we get out of Fletcher Cox this year because I think they can really do some good things especially with having all those pieces being able to have different amalgamations of a 3-4 and a 4-3 front. They might have a 4-3 over, a 4-3 strong, come out in a straight 3-4, 3-4 under. Like, they have so many different looks I think they'll be able to throw at you, and this preseason will be a crucial, critical time for them to work out some of the kinks, right? Because... It's a lot of information to process. They have to get time out on the field together. And this is the time where you really sharpen metal with each other. And then, lastly, uh, and th- this is one of the things I did not mention yet. Because right now, I think it's Marcus Epps and Anthony Harris at your safety spots. I think those will be your day one starters in 2022. However, who is going to emerge as the backup? behind these guys. And I'm really looking for Jaquiski Tart, our acquisition from the San Francisco 49ers, their for, former second round pick. I, I wanna see him step up because he's solid in coverage and he can really lay the thump on people when they come across the middle, give them something to think about. So I wanna see him in action. I wanna see him in action and see how he's integrated himself into this defense. So. Those are the things that I want to see going into this game. And and you know what we'll throw in there? I want to see Gardner Minshew come out and be sharp. Just like he was against the Jets in the actual regular season game last year. I want to see him come out and look sharp. I don't want to see any of this, this mess we've seen in training camp. I want to see him come out and get, look sharp. Because if he looks sharp, then that just gives me confirmation that he's good and confirmation that this Eagles defense is much improved over last year, especially depth-wise. So those are the things I'm looking at. Um, These are the things I've kind of stewed over this week as I kind of just seen the way the landscape played out with this team. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about that, what you guys are going to be looking for going into week two and then into the first preseason game against the Jets on August 12th. Lastly, let me know what you guys think of the Hall of Fame preseason game that happened on Thursday night between my Raiders and, uh, shoot, was it the Jets? Yeah, I believe it was the Jets. Let me know what you guys think about that game. Look, I liked our backup quarterback. We didn't see D-Car in there, but I love the backup quarterback. He... He, uh, he got some pressure on him at times, but he was able to put up some points, had that nice run into the end zone at the end of the game. Uh, the only starters we really saw were Fabian Moreau, you know, who's uh, Fabian Moreau, who's going to be in, in there when you have 12 personnel with him and Darren Waller, and then Josh Jacobs, who looked pretty sharp, looked pretty sharp in limited action. On Thursday night, I, I love what I saw out of him. Looked like he had fresh legs. He was running hard, breaking through tackles. I love that. And then I want to see how Amir Abdullah looks as a backup running back, as a change of pace guy. 
you know, he's a you know, former first round pick for the Lions. Did not work out there for him, but I want to see how he looks as the backup because that I think there is a lot left in the tank, and I think that he could be a great change of pace guy. Uh, very has power, but a smaller, more more of a elusive and agile type of running back. So, you know, game two, I think we'll see one or two drives from Derek Carr and one, the only Mr. Devontae Adams. And then maybe we'll see some Darren Waller as well. But right now, I like what I saw out of the backups. I like what I saw out of Josh McDaniels. Just I know it's just a preseason game, but you got to figure he's very he had to be very excited to have his first coaching debut in, in years, right? Since the Broncos. And that, that stint did not go well. So, you know, he had, his blood had to be pumping. Uh, even though it was a preseason game last night. So very excited to see him out there doing his thing, having some really solid play calling, running the rock, you know, just getting straight after it, not playing no games, straight, not, you know, straight up and down, not a whole lot, lot of special effects. You know exactly what we're, we're, we're going to do and, and how we're going to operate. I love that. Hopefully we have, you know, love him or hate him. I, I hope this team has a, a John Gruden type of feel where we're just in your face, tell you where we're going to run the ball and just ram the ball down your throat. We will see. But that's it for this episode. Let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, I will be back next Thursday. Uh, Wednesday night, I'm, I might not be on, but I'll be back next Thursday on Facebook Live. Stan Jane Conaway on, on Facebook Live. Um, I'll be out in Vegas, you know, Pacific time, and we'll be doing a uh, live stream for the first time in a while, talking about uh, week two of NFL training camp. And then I'll be getting into some some boxing and some basketball as well. We got a lot to talk about with James Harden and what the Sixers are doing. Got a lot to talk about with the Phillies. Big trade for um, Robertson, the relief pitcher, and then Noah Syndergaard, who had his first start. You know, had, had his moments where he was getting hit a little bit, but came out with the win, five to four, going into the rain delay. So that was great. That was great. And he's coming off that Tommy John surgery. And we'll see if he gets back up to that high 90s velocity. But even right now, coming off the surgery, not being full strength, he's still throwing 94, 95, which is fine by me. Because even if he's half of what he was with the Mets, he's still going to be an upgrade over what we had in the three spot with Zach Eflin, who's injured right now. And if he's 80 to 100% of what he was, then we get a guy to add to Zach Wheeler and Nola to make a big three. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, that being said, I'm going to get up out of here. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment. It's more surely appreciated. And I'll holler at y'all next time. Peace.